In the last video, I got this vintage HP LaserJet 2 printer to pass a test page, but the print quality left a lot to be desired. In this video, I'm going to work on the toner cartridge and we'll discuss the parts of the cartridge, how they function, and what goes wrong. So in last week's video, the toner cartridge was in pretty bad shape. I got another OEM cartridge that was from the 90s, and it looks like it's no better than the other one. I haven't pulled the seal on this yet, but if you turn the drum, which you always want to turn towards the bottom of the cartridge away from the toner hopper, it turns really easily. It's very loose. So the looseness of this shows that the wiper blade is old. It's gotten hard and curled away from the drum. What we're going to do is take this cartridge apart, see what kind of shape it's in. Again, this is a different cartridge than last week, so we'll start by pulling the seal and running the test page to see exactly what we've got. When you pull the seal out, just break the plastic away, pull it straight up and out. So let's see how a test print looks on this cartridge. It seems like a lot of people aren't aware, but the LaserJet 2 and pretty much all the LaserJet printers, except an obscure 90s color LaserJet, were made by Canon. The LaserJet 2 is based on the Canon SX engine, and in all, over 300 printers were released using that engine. There were Okies, Apples, HPs, Canons, tons and tons of brands, many of which I don't see anymore. So as you can see, we still have a foggy background, uh, same kind of issues as the other one, just not quite as bad. When you're working with toner, you need to keep safety in mind. Toner, especially in the age of these machines, is literally powdered plastic that's been pulverized, graded by size, and then uh, had some additives added to it. I recommend at an absolute minimum, an N95 mask. Um, I buy these 3M ones in 10 packs on Amazon. They're not very expensive. If I remember, I'll try to put a link below on how to get these. To get these old cartridges apart, you need to be able to get these pins out. So you can see these old pins, there's one here, one here, here, and here. So what we used is a tool we made out of a lag bolt, I believe they're called, and a chainsaw file handle. And all you do is you put a drop of super glue in there and then uh, just drive that all the way in. But nice and snug. The way you use this tool is you take the toner cartridge and you insert the tool into the hole in the end of the pin and then you simply do it at a little bit of an angle to get a good bite. It digs in, put your thumb and just pull. It'll come out. And you can see that there are two little tiny tabs and hopefully I'll show up on the video. But there's two tiny tabs on the edge of that pin. If one of them's broken off, you're okay. If both of them are gone, then the pin won't stay in. Do that for all four of them. Ooh, left-handed. Once that's released, there's two clips here that are holding the toner. Sometimes they clip, sometimes they don't. You lift it up on the side that does not have the slot. There's a slot here with a plastic piece in it. So you have to lift it up and then off to that side. Once you have that off, there is one more pin right here. There are two springs, one here and one here. This spring, when you release it, it stays attached. The second spring here comes all the way off. Then the toner hopper just rotates up and lifts right up. And you can see you got a nice even coating of toner. This, this hopper's looking good. The other one was leaking. This one is still leaking, but not as bad. Now, a good thing to use for toner is just stretch and dust cloths. They work really well. Just uh, open the cloth up, stretch it a little bit. And it absorbs the toner. Holds onto them really well. So next, this is the Corona wire. This is the main charge wire that charges the drum. So that needs to be removed on the side that has the contacts, these are the contacts that go into the prayer. You just push, lift up and release, and then slide it out. If this cartridge wasn't brand new, because this is a, a new old stock cartridge, I would take a cotton swab and clean the fine wire in there. But if you don't need to mess with it, just don't. So next I need to take this uh, 
drum shaft out, this is the ground for the drum. So this drum will not do its job if that ground isn't making good contact. So slide out. If this is dirty, clean it. Um, you can put a little bit of lube here, but basically pass this index line. It should be cleaned with alcohol and left bare and clean. That makes contact in the drum with a metal contact in there. And if that's not making a good contact, you will get horrible prints. This is the drum. The drum conducts electricity only when exposed to light. And they are photosensitive, so I wouldn't leave them sitting out like this for, for hours. They're okay for uh, you know half an hour. I keep them wrapped up when I'm not in use. This one is dirty because the wiper blade's bad. So I'm just going to clean that off. This is in good shape. I'll take one of our test prints, wrap it up like that, stick a piece of tape on it to protect it. This is the part we're after. This is the wiper blade and it works very much like a wiper on the car. It cleans the drum of any residue of toner that's left after the page is printed. Usually about 93 to 95% of the toner makes it onto the page. The rest of it has to be cleaned off the drum so it doesn't show up on the next pass. And that's why we have crud on the back of the pages. So this rubber blade right here along the edge of the metal, that shouldn't be white and milky like that. That should be clear and it's not. The rubber's just gotten old. I don't know what the exact material is. I think it might be some kind of a silicone. So you pull that out and slide it out. They would normally be a lot dirtier than this, but literally what we just printed is all this has ever seen. And when I clean this off, I can feel a lot of texture to it and it's not straight, it's bent back. So I don't know if I can get that on camera, but the wiper blade is curved this way. When we look at this drum, and this is an old bad drum, this is not the, the drum we're using. This sits like this. And this, because it's so hard and stiff, is going to tear up the drum. It's going to do pretty bad things to it. I don't think there's any way to fix this. If anybody has any suggestions about what we could do to uh, restore this rubber, I would love to hear it. Um, the fact that it's been in a cartridge for 20 years and therefore that pressure has caused it to, uh, to arc away from the drum, I just don't see any way to get that back in the right shape. What I did do is I got an old five-year-old remanufactured cartridge and I'm going to steal the, uh, the wiper blade out of it in order to fix this cartridge. The remanufactured cartridge probably would work just fine. Uh, I looked at it and it's, uh, its build date was like five to eight years ago, so the rubber should be fine still. Uh, but I wanted to get the OEM cartridge working so that uh, we got the printer back in original condition with an original, uh, original toner cartridge. So here is a wiper blade I removed from a remanufactured toner cartridge. It wasn't that old. If you look, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but the blade is not curving away like the other one was. It's much more transparent and quite flexible. Uh, now, if you just stick this blade in the cartridge and you don't put any kind of lubricant or anything on it, then it's going to stick to the drum and peel back. It's called sucking the wiper blade. And you definitely don't want that to happen. I'm going to use a aftermarket powder that we used for a year. And since I have basically, um, this is full, I just opened it, a lifetime supply of laser lands of methylusa powder, I'm going to use this. If you're building a cartridge and you're trying to fix a printer and get it working, what you can use is toner. Toner is a little trickier. You've got to make sure that you use enough of it. You need a fair amount of toner on the edge of the wiper blade, so along the leading edge. And you also want to coat the drum with toner. Once you get the drum in the cartridge, turn it always so that the, uh, the drum is rotating up against the wiper blade uh, and make sure that it turns freely. If it's sticking or chittering, you need to add more powder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and unwrap this drum. This is giving me flashbacks to the 90s because it was hard to get drums and people sold good used drums wrapped in a test page. Remember this drum is very easy to damage and photosensitive so you can't leave it sitting out for a long time. I'm going to take a little bit of the Methylusa powder or like I said you could use toner. I'm going to sprinkle some on this Webrel cotton pad and then I'm going to just coat the drum in this. 
Now the, the Methylusa powder is great. It is extremely slippery. So if you use too much of it, it'll actually cause issues. But I just want to get an even coating on the drum. Doesn't have to be perfect, just uh, all over it. And then I want to get it right on the cutting edge of the blade. So it's the edge that is towards the drum. That's what's going to peel back if we suck the blade. Now I can take and install this wiper blade. I'm going to set this drum aside so I don't damage it. I'm setting it at an angle so that it, the gear can ride up against something and it won't roll away. Get my screws started. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put my initials on the blade. And install the drum. Install the ground connection and axle right in there like that. So we can take and rotate the shutter back out of the way, hold it in place, and turn the drum in the direction it's supposed to go. If there's any extra stuff, you can wipe it off. Put the two parts back together. And take the small pin that goes in right here. Attach this spring there. Here, this one. On there. I'm going to take the Corona wire and it has two holes and a peg. Like that. When you're installing the cover on the toner cartridge, you need the end with the slot to match up with the tab on the end of the toner hopper. Slip the tab on the toner hopper through the slot in the cartridge cover, then rotate the cartridge down and attach the two clasps on the front. Once the clasps are in, you just take and install the pins. I like to attach the pins onto the end of the tool that we use to remove them just loosely. Once you have the cover on and the pins in, all you need to do is wipe it off with a cloth and it's ready to go. When the LaserJet 2 came out, it was amazing compared to what we had before. The LaserJet, or the LaserJet 1 as it's now often referred to, was a service nightmare. If you wanted to change the feed tires in a LaserJet 1 printer, you had to get to them in the bottom of the printer by going through the top. It took hours just to change feed rollers. The LaserJet 2, on the other hand, is a modular wonder. It is so easy to work on. The modules just come out with a few screws. I don't think there's anything on a LaserJet 2 that takes more than an hour to repair. Couple nice clean pages, portrait and landscape. Fancy printers back then. Would you like to see more detailed videos on this printer? Comment below if you want to see videos or live streams going into detail on HP LaserJet 2's major assemblies. Click the Ravenwolf logo to subscribe, and here's another video that you might like.